You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. Howdy, folks. Welcome to episode 289 of the Soul Forge podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. All right, and today it's a rarity. It's one of those infamous walk and talk episodes. So for a bit of context, I'm your friendly neighborhood mailman down in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. And what I'm doing today, much like every day, is walking and delivering the mail. But instead of listening to podcasts while I walk... I'm going to record one and I'm going to do as little editing as possible maybe there will be some wind noise because it's a bit windy today but today is May 3rd and May 4th is tomorrow which means it's Thursday and I have an episode to record or release I guess I'm recording it now but it has to be released on Thursday because that is the goal I set for myself and I almost thought about having a skip week or looking through the archives and finding a repeat episode that might be worthy of attention that may or may not have gotten enough downloads in the original run. But screw that. I am going to walk and talk. And you're going to listen however you do. Whether you're walking, riding, driving, sitting, doing something else. I don't friggin' know. Why don't you write in and tell me what you're doing? Podcast at gmail.com It's been quite a while since we've received any emails, so that would be nice. I'd love to hear from you folks out there in podcast land. So like I said, today, as this is released, it's going to be May 4th, which is Star Wars Day, so may the 4th be with you. And also, that means it's Paul... It's Paul's birthday! And you all know Paul. He's my co-host on the Cosmic Pizza Podcast and the Epsilon Free Podcast. We used to do the Sci-Fi Waffle Podcast together. And when I did the Rusted Robot Podcast, he was my UK correspondent. So I guess I've known Paul for about 10 years, which is pretty cool. So Paul, happy frickin' birthday to you. I hope it's a good one. And actually today, May 3rd, It's a beautiful day. It's been doing nothing but raining the last week and a half or so. Today, it's windy, but the sun is out and the temperature is steadily climbing. Tomorrow and the next few days, however, we're going to get more rain. So today is the perfect day to record a podcast for all of you out there. So I hope you enjoy that. Uh, What else can I tell you? Well, actually, at one point... Somebody asked me if I could explain exactly what it is a mailman does. Did you hear that traffic noise? That's fun. Uh, that often prevents me from hearing my podcasts. Hopefully it doesn't drown me out. That beep is me scanning parcels for delivery. Okay. So, how does the mail operate, you have asked? Or some of you have asked? Maybe none of you care. I don't know. Anyway, here in the Sioux or Sault Ste. Marie. We call it the Sioux if we're from here. We start at 8.15 in the morning, and then we go to our desks, where the mail is already there waiting for us in trays or buckets. And then we sort it into our cases. And then after we're done sorting in the cases, we flag all the parcels, just put a marker card so that uh, we know 
when to grab one of those parcels from our pack sacks, par uh, parcel bags, mail bags, whatever you want to call them. And then uh, you scan it and you put it in their mailbox along with any mail and flyers they might require that day. So before that though, we, uh, we flag everything and then we tie it out according to the walking pattern. And tying it out just means we put it in bundles and put elastics around it. And then you put it in bags, you put tags on the bags, and then the truck drivers take your bags to the various points of locations in the city where there's those gray boxes on the corner. You may have seen them. We call them relay boxes. And so the drivers put the relay bags in. And that's what happens. And so we take our first bundles out, load up our mail bags, and, and uh, wait for the cab to come and pick us up and drive us to our location where we start. And then you just start delivering the mail. And then when you run out of mail, you're at a relay box. You take your keys, you open up the relay box, you empty out the bag, you put it in your mail bag, and keep delivering the mail. So basically, my job consists of taking paper products from one box and putting it in another box, putting it in a bag, taking it out of bags, putting it in other bags, and putting it in other boxes. So basically, I'm a paper pusher. That's what I do. It's mostly paper. You know, there's the occasional parcel or whatever. But it's, it's all pretty much paper or cardboard, glossy magazines, that kind of thing. And that's what I do. And then just before I'm done delivering, I'll call my cab and I'll wait for it to come and pick me up and bring me back to the post office. And waiting for the cabs is the worst part of the job. And that is because in the morning we all get out there and wait in the corridor just outside the uh, post office and then uh, well we have to wait for the cabs to come after they do their school drop-offs for all the kids because i guess the cab company has contracts for the mail for schools and for who knows what else and sometimes a bunch of us will get in the same cab and then we get all dropped off and we're in the uh the same area like the east part of the city the west part of the city whatever but the waiting is the hardest part. And then at the end of the day, we call. And the dispatcher lady has no idea what she's doing. Uh, she'll say, oh, that'll be uh, 20, 25 minutes before the cab will come. And sometimes it's 45 minutes, but sometimes it's only five minutes. So you never actually know when the cab is going to pick you up. Luckily, at the end of my route, if I happen to have mail for the last guy on the route, he's got some lawn chairs that I sit in and wait for the cab. And I scroll on my phone and play around and just basically wait. And it's under a tree, so I try to stay out of the elements as best as I can and hope that there's uh, no lightning that day so I don't get uh, electrocuted or crushed by a tree or whatever. So that's basically the job of a mailman taking paper from one spot and putting it to another, taking cabs. Uh, and then when we get back, at the end of the day, we put our scanner that scans the parcels back in the charging port, put our keys back in the lockbox, and prep any flyers we might have for the next day. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you, do we ever enjoy getting flyers? No, no, we don't. That's a lie. Nobody likes getting flyers. Customers don't like getting them. We don't like delivering them. The only thing it's good for is the uh, corporation gets a, what do I want to say here, shit ton of money. Uh, we get, on average, like a penny per flyer, and I've heard that the corporation gets another 80 cents per piece of flyer. So if we're delivering like a Canadian Tire flyer or something, Canadian Tire will pay 80 cents per piece, and, and we get a penny of it, maybe two pennies. So I'm not complaining, I'm just observing. I would never complain about anything because that doesn't get you anywhere in life. But basically, it's the flyer money that allows the uh, corporate bigwigs like the vice president, president, and uh, regional presidents, and whatever else they have in the structure, making money and staying afloat. And uh, contrary to popular belief, tax money does not pay for our wages. It's all stamps, parcels, and flyers. So it's a self-sufficient corporation. And that's basically all I know about that. But there's something coming up that I'm not looking forward to. 
that I will tell you right after this word from another podcast right here on the ESO Network. Hi, I'm Gina Shock from the Go-Go's, fabulous drummer of the Go-Go's. Hi, this is Tony Levin of King Crimson. Hi, this is David Fisher of the Rock and Roll Fantasy Camp. Hi, this is Richard Evans. I am the author of Listening to the Music the Machines Make. Hi, this is Teresa Kariakis, punk rock photographer. Hi, I'm Tom Bojour, author of Nothing But a Good Time, and you are listening to Modern Musicology. Modern Musicology. Modern Musicology. You're listening to Modern Musicology, so, you know, pay attention, you might learn something. And we're back. Was that not a lovely promo? Obviously, I don't know what I put in there because I'm out walking and talking to all of you, and tonight... After recording an episode of the Cosmic Pizza podcast, uh, I'm going to edit this and get it prepped for uh, upload and download for tomorrow. And of course, you can find almost every single episode of the Soul Forge podcast on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. Just look up the name Sean Vanderloo. That's me. You hear it in the opening credits every, uh, every episode. And... That opening credit monologue was made by my good friend Jarman of the A Play on Nerds podcast network. And if you're not listening to A Play on Nerds, what are you doing with your life? You need to be listening to Jarman and Steve. Steve and Jarman and their various podcasts. Anyway, Jarman's a voiceover artist and if you need uh, something voiceovered, hire him. He's good. And uh, anyway, so what's, what's upcoming here? Well... We're going to be having what's called a restructure. And what's that? Pray tell. Well, we all have roots. And in the Sioux, there's about 40 different routes. Roots, routes, walks, whatever you want to call them. And uh, every bunch of years, people from the route measurement office come. And for... They will hire some lackeys off the street to count our mail based on the postal code like each length of street has its own postal code i'm sure it's the same in the united states where each length of road has a zip code and it's different depending on what side of the street you're on and if there's any cross streets then it changes and all that good stuff so anyway what they do for two weeks is count how much mail each postal code gets and then we weigh the bags And, of course, this delays us from getting our cabs and going out there, so we have longer days for these two weeks of what we would like to call hell. But, anyways, so they weigh it, and they already know anyway, so this is really a formality. Um, Count the mail, weigh the mail, all that kind of good stuff. And then they see how much each postal code gets, and then they take the computer, and they make some new routes, and in October, the new routes come out. So that means we're going to have to do a shift bid. And based on seniority, we're all going to get new new walks, new routes, new routes. And that means everything's going to change. And the whole purpose behind this is apparently to make the, the routes more efficient. And also to reduce the number of routes. So that either people retire or whatever... So right now we have approximately 40, and I'm sure they want to get us down a bunch. They always try. The last time they did that when I was living up in Timmins, we had 18 routes, and they couldn't do it, so we still had 18 routes. And boy, were they mad because they couldn't reduce any jobs. Because I guess the more the more routes you have, the more relay boxes you have, and each relay box, of course, costs money because you have to pay people to plow them out from the snow in the uh, the winter and all that good stuff. So the, the less stuff that they have to take care of, the more their profits go up. And uh, so this is happening next week for the two week of counting. And then they're going to do the, the rebuilds of the routes. And then in October we pick, I guess probably before October we would pick. Um, and then in October they start. And right now, We have, of the 40 routes, five are mobiles, which means you take your own truck, or not like a post office truck, and you do all the mail and all the parcels. Because right now, if you're on a foot route like I am, where I walk, I don't take all the big, big parcels. That's done by the same guy who who, uh, drops off the relay bags in their vans. So they're going to be bringing 15, 10, maybe it's 10. It's either 10 or 15 
new male mobiles to, to the Sioux. And that way we're going to have 15 driving routes instead of five. And I hate those because you're, uh, you're never consistently one temperature. Because if you're walking either in the snow or the rain or the sun, at least you're one temperature because your body is doing the same thing over and over again. But if you're in a truck, you're in the truck, you're driving. You're out of the truck, you're delivering. You're in, you're out. So you can't stay consistently warm in the winter. And it's just a big pain in the ass. So I'm hoping most people want the truck routes. Uh, usually the people who are closer to retirement like that because then there's less walking. But I don't want it because then you're doing all the parcels, the big parcels and the small parcels, plus your mail, plus your flyers. So I don't want to have anything to do with that. But I'll know in a few months. And that, my friends, is what's going on in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. Uh, I can't say the land that culture forgot because that designation is for Timmins, where I was for 19 years up until last year, as you all know. Uh, but uh, what am I what am I going to designate the Sioux as? Sioux St. Marie, Ontario, Canada. My home and native land, I guess. I don't friggin' know. Anyway, that's what's going on there. Uh, let's talk about some other stuff. Um, movies that I've seen recently. Uh, I saw the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves movie a few weeks back. And uh, as you know, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons in 2015. Only did it for a few years. Haven't played it in quite a while, actually. Uh, the movie was fine. It was enjoyable enough. It starred Chris Pine. And then the other day, I watched the Super... Well, I said that wrong. The Super Mario movie with Chris Pratt as the voice of Mario. And uh, it was cute, actually. Uh, definitely good for kids. Um, lots of little Easter eggs and references from games and whatnot. Uh, but that was fun. I enjoyed it. Uh, I wouldn't rate any of these films. They were just, they were good. I'm glad I went to see them. Tomorrow, me and the brothers uh, are going to go see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And that's also starring Chris Pratt. And so that should be fun and exciting. Looking forward to that. Um, I've been watching, I think I'm halfway through Season 2 that was just released on Netflix of uh, the series Sweet Tooth. Halfway done that. It's really enjoyable. Uh, I'm trying not to binge it because it's going to be gone for another year until they make a third season if they do. But that's a lot of fun. I like that a lot. And I'm actually talking to you and passing houses. Uh, so I need to walk backwards and deliver the mail properly. I got, I got carried away just talking about movies, which I love. Um, okay. What else can I tell you or share with you about life? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, remember, this comes up May 4th, so check out all the Star Wars movies. Um, what else? Oh, I, uh, Star Trek Picard and uh, what was the other one? Mandalorian Season 3 just finished the run a few weeks back. Uh, Star, Trek, Star Trek Picard was freaking fantastic. What a great way to end the series. Uh, there was some stuff that didn't necessarily make sense or I would have done differently, but overall, I give it a 9.5 out of 10. I'm sorry to see it go. Um, and speaking of other things that have gone, uh, Melissa and I actually split up there about a month ago. So I figured I'd throw that in there for updated news for all of you guys and girls out there in podcast land. And... I guess on that lovely note, it might be time to end the podcast, but hope you'll take care of yourselves and each other. And remember, roses are red, mercury is in thermometers, invincible moose next five kilometers. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links and don't forget to share the show with everyone you know the soul forge podcast is your best source for living your best life think about it there's so many has anyone been to them all not likely i want to be the first one to see them all Truly wonderful the mind of a child is. Come on. Hmm?
When you find people who need your help, you help them. No matter what. Good luck. We have hope. Hope that things can get better. And they will. Stand up together. Because that's when we're strongest. As one. You won't be going alone. You'll have a friend with you. No. I'll have a Jedi with me. You might wanna buckle up, baby. Rise, rise in the force. Take care of this little one. It'll take care of you. We had each other. That's how we won. The force is strong in my family. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. What is it they've sent us? Hope. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.